we have learned a few minutes ago that the FBI is present at the home of music mogul Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy. Before the raid, a lot had been going on with Diddy. Also tonight, music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, accused of sex trafficking and sexual assault. He's in the custody of the UCLA Police Department. They arrested him Monday afternoon at an athletic complex on the university's campus. But the most shocking part of all this is the disturbing pictures they found in Diddy's home. We saw agents walking out of this house carrying a cardboard box as well as several bags from the second story of the property out here. FBI raids Diddy's home. The air was filled with tension and anticipation as law enforcement officials descended upon Diddy's home. Footage captured the chaotic scene, revealing a group of men detained and waiting outside the mansion. Later identified as Combs' sons, Justin and King, they were seen anxiously awaiting the outcome of the raid. The presence of Combs' own family members added an extra layer of drama to the already shocking events unfolding. The raid was carried out by a team led by Homeland Security, a clear indication of the seriousness of the investigation. The involvement of Homeland Security investigation HSI, a prestigious agency known for its pursuit of transnational criminal groups, underscores the gravity of the situation. The Southern District of New York, one of the most esteemed jurisdictions in the country, is leading the investigation. If they are bringing a case against Combs, he has a lot to worry about, according to former federal prosecutor Niyama Ramani. The federal investigation will meticulously examine the evidence collected during the raid on Combs' properties, as well as the testimonies of the accusers. The interviews conducted with the four Jane Doe's and one John Doe, along with any additional witnesses, will play a crucial role in determining the strength of the case against Combs. The significance of the ongoing investigation cannot be overstated. It represents a turning point in Combs' life and career, as the allegations against him have already had significant repercussions. The public scrutiny and legal battles have led to Combs stepping down from his position as the chairman of Revolt TV and severing ties with various companies. The potential legal consequences for Combs are substantial. If the evidence gathered during the raid and the subsequent investigation supports the allegations, he could face criminal charges that carry severe penalties. The Southern District of New York has a reputation for its rigorous pursuit of justice, and Combs finds himself in a world of hurt, as stated by former federal prosecutor Nima Romani. It is important to note that Combs himself was not present at the time of the raid. According to NBC News, he was in Florida, preparing for a trip to the Caribbean. However, officials wasted no time in seizing his phones, ensuring that any potential evidence would not be tampered with or destroyed. The world watched as law enforcement officials meticulously combed through every inch of the lavish property, searching for any evidence that could shed light on the alleged crimes. The entertainment industry has long grappled with issues of exploitation and abuse, and the allegations against Combs serve as a stark reminder of the work that still needs to be done. The hashtag MeToo movement has brought attention to the prevalence of sexual misconduct, and this case further underscores the importance of addressing these issues head-on. The ongoing fight against sex trafficking is a critical battle in the pursuit of justice and the protection of vulnerable individuals. The involvement of Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, in this case highlights the commitment of law enforcement agencies to dismantle criminal networks involved in human trafficking. The investigation into Combs serves as a powerful message that no one is above the law, regardless of their status or influence. One of Diddy's colleagues, 50 Cent, was quick to react to the news about the raid. Known for his candid commentary, 50 Cent did not hold back. He posted on Instagram, it just got real the feds and all the cribs, damn they got the kids in cuffs, suggesting that those detained might include Diddy's own children. In a follow-up post, he added, Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done, they don't come like that unless they got a case. The gravity of the situation was not lost on 50 Cent or the public, as fans and followers flooded the comments section of his posts. Some expressed shock, while others speculated about the implications of the raid. One fan remarked, My first words when I saw the news, 50 Cent is gonna have a field day with this. Another commented on the seriousness of the situation, feds don't move until they pretty sure they got something. Damn. Diddy's journey to fame began in the vibrant streets of Harlem, New York, where he was born as Sean Combs on November 4th, 1969. Growing up in a neighborhood plagued by poverty and crime, Diddy faced numerous challenges from an early age. However, his determination and passion for music would ultimately pave the way for his extraordinary rise to stardom. Even as a young boy, Diddy showed a natural inclination towards music. He attended the prestigious Mount St. Michael Academy, where he excelled academically 
quickly and began to immerse himself in the world of hip-hop. The rich tapestry of the genre, with its pulsating beats and powerful lyrics, resonated deeply with Diddy, and he soon realized that music was his true calling. In his late teens, Diddy's talent caught the attention of Andre Harrell, the founder of Uptown Records. Harrell recognized Diddy's potential and offered him an internship at the record label. This opportunity was a turning point in Diddy's life, as it allowed him to immerse himself in the music industry and learn the ropes from the inside. Diddy's hard work and dedication quickly paid off, and he rose through the ranks at Uptown Records. From being an intern, he soon became an A&R executive, responsible for discovering and nurturing new talent. It was during this time that Diddy made a significant impact on the industry by shaping the sound of 90s R&B. Diddy's mainstream breakthrough came with the release of his debut studio album, No Way Out, in 1997. The album was a game-changer, not only for Diddy, but for the entire music industry. It showcased his versatility as an artist, seamlessly blending rap, R&B, and pop elements to create a sound that resonated with audiences worldwide. However, Diddy's ambitions went beyond working for someone else's record label. In 1993, he took a leap of faith and founded his own record label, Bad Boy Records. This bold move marked the beginning of a new era in Diddy's career, as he now had the freedom to shape his own musical vision. Bad Boy Records quickly became a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. Diddy's keen eye for talent led him to discover a young rapper named Christopher Wallace, who would later become known as the Notorious B.I.G. Diddy believed in Wallace's raw talent and worked tirelessly to promote his music, helping him become one of the most influential and iconic figures in hip-hop history. The success of the Notorious B.I.G. and other artists signed to Bad Boy Records propelled Diddy into the spotlight. In 1997, he released his debut studio album, No Way Out, which showcased his skills as a rapper and producer. No Way Out featured a star-studded lineup of collaborations, including artists like Faith Evans, 112, and May. The album's lead single, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, became an instant hit, topping the charts and solidifying Diddy's status as a force to be reckoned with. The success of the album was further propelled by the emotional tribute to his late friend and protege, the notorious B.I.G., in the form of the chart-topping single, I'll Be Missing You. The album's critical acclaim and commercial success were undeniable. No Way Out topped the Billboard 200 chart and went on to sell over 7 million copies worldwide. It earned Diddy three Grammy Awards, including Best Rap Album, and solidified his position as a prominent figure in the music industry. Diddy's impact on the music industry extended far beyond his own music. As the founder of Bad Boy Records, he played a pivotal role in shaping the sound of hip-hop and R&B in the late 90s and early 2000s. The label became synonymous with chart-topping hits and groundbreaking collaborations. Now all these achievements are being threatened by allegations against Diddy that just won't stop mounting. We're back with new allegations of sexual harassment and assault against Sean Diddy Combs. Rodney Lil Rod Jones a producer on Combs' latest album, filed a lawsuit Monday. He alleges that Combs sexually harassed and assaulted him while he lived at several of Combs' homes. Allegations against Diddy so far. One individual who has come forward with shocking allegations against Diddy is Rodney Lil Rod Jones. As a producer and videographer, Jones claims to have experienced sexual harassment and assault at the hands of Diddy. According to Jones, Diddy's behavior towards him was nothing short of disturbing. He alleges that Diddy subjected him to sexual harassment, creating an uncomfortable and hostile work environment. These allegations add another layer of complexity to the already explosive situation surrounding Diddy. Diddy's lawyer, however, dismisses Jones's accusations as pure fiction, claiming that they hold no truth. The battle of credibility between Jones and Diddy intensifies, leaving the public to question who is telling the truth. The legal proceedings surrounding these allegations are ongoing, and the outcome will ultimately determine the veracity of the claims. But the damage to Diddy's reputation has already been done, the public's perception of him has forever changed, and the industry as a whole is grappling with the implications of these allegations. Let's not forget that Cassie, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, filed a federal law suit where she accused Diddy of controlling every aspect of her life and subjecting her to violence and sexual exploitation. Cassie's lawsuit unveils a deeply troubling narrative surrounding her association with Diddy. In her legal filings, she vividly portrays a relationship characterized by complete control and manipulation, where Diddy asserted dominance over every facet of her life. According to Cassie's accounts, Diddy's influence extended far beyond the realms of professional collaboration, encompassing every aspect of her daily existence. From pivotal career decisions to intimate personal choices, Cassie 
alleges that Diddy held an ironclad grip, leaving her with little autonomy or agency. In her allegations, Cassie paints a stark picture of a dynamic where Diddy's authority dictated not just her professional trajectory, but also intruded into her private life, shaping her relationships and dictating her interactions with the world around her. This level of control, as described in Cassie's lawsuit, portrays a disturbing power dynamic that raises significant questions about the nature of their relationship and the impact it had on Cassie's well-being and sense of self. But it doesn't stop there. Cassie further alleges that she was subjected to physical and sexual abuse by Diddy. The lawsuit mentions multiple witnesses who have seen the abuse take place, adding weight to her claims. In one particularly distressing incident, Cassie recalls a dinner that turned into a nightmare back in 2018. Diddy forcefully entered her apartment despite her repeated cries of no and her frantic efforts to push him away. Despite her resistance, he callously raped her, causing unimaginable trauma and leaving deep scars that may never fully heal. It's crucial to understand that Cassie's legal action is not an isolated case. She mentions multiple witnesses who have seen the abuse firsthand. One such witness is her friend, singer-songwriter Tiffany Redd, who wrote an open letter to Diddy supporting Cassie's account. Redd recounts an incident from Cassie's 29th birthday party in 2015, where Diddy and his security team forcibly removed Cassie from the event with the intention of subjecting her to sexual encounters with other men. Redd also mentions that Cassie had confided in her about Diddy's physical abuse, adding credibility to the claims made in the lawsuit. In response to these shocking accusations, Diddy's attorney, Benjamin Braffman, released a statement to the New York Times vehemently denying all allegations. Braffman described the lawsuit as filled with baseless and outrageous lies, suggesting it was a ploy to damage Diddy's reputation and extort money from him. However, it's essential to note that settling the lawsuit swiftly doesn't automatically prove innocence. The terms of the settlement remain undisclosed, raising questions about the truth behind the allegations. Cassie's courage in coming forward and seeking justice represents a significant step in exposing the dark side of the music industry. Her allegations against Diddy shed light on the pervasive power imbalances and abuse that need urgent attention and resolution. These allegations have sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry, as Diddy has long been seen as a powerful figure and a respected mogul. The lawsuit challenges this perception, exposing a darker side to his persona. Roger Bonds, once in the role of Diddy's head of security, emerges as a pivotal figure adding fuel to the ongoing discussions about Diddy's behavior. Bonds has stepped forward with a treasure trove of revelations that peel back the layers of Diddy's public persona, revealing a troubling pattern of conduct. According to Bonds, Diddy wielded his power recklessly, displaying little regard for the well-being of those around him. Allegations of physical violence and the drugging of women's drinks have surfaced, casting a darker shadow over Diddy's public image. In a recent exclusive interview with Foxhole Radio, another individual, known by the moniker Exhibit, took center stage, providing a first-hand account of an unforgettable encounter involving Diddy. This tale unfolds against the vibrant backdrop of a New Year's Eve celebration in Miami, Florida. Amidst the festive atmosphere, Exhibit found himself caught up in the energy of a lively house party, where fate collided with chance as he crossed paths with the notorious video vixen, Superhead. Within the pulsating rhythm of this social whirlwind, Diddy extended a spur-of-the-moment invitation, beckoning Exhibit and Superhead to join him at a nearby club, setting the stage for an unexpected and enigmatic journey. As they piled into a car, alongside Diddy and other companions, anticipation filled the air, hinting at a night filled with unpredictability and surprises. The car ride itself took on an enigmatic quality, as the eclectic group embarked on a journey promising anything but the ordinary. This initial phase of their adventure served as a prelude to a series of events that would unfold throughout the evening, leaving an indelible mark on Exhibit's memory and providing fodder for an unforgettable tale. Upon arrival at the club, they entered through the back, greeted by the ambiance of the VIP lounge. Super Head's astonishment redirected Exhibit's attention to a corner, where two men shared a passionate kiss, a scene entirely unexpected in such a setting. The surprises did not end there. Superhead pointed out another man dancing au naturel, leaving Exhibit bewildered. Overwhelmed by the surreal experience, he left abruptly, grappling with the strangeness of the night. Reflecting on the events, Exhibit struggled to comprehend how he ended up in such a situation, having frequented countless clubs without encountering anything remotely similar. However, the narrative surrounding Diddy extends far beyond these singular encounters. Clive Davis, renowned for his musical acumen, garnered attention not only for his artistic talents, but also for his personal life. Following two divorces, Davis embarked on a journey of self-discovery, eventually embracing his true desires and forming a romantic relationship with none other than Puff Diddy. Allegedly, the year 1994 marked the onset of a complex relationship between Diddy and Davis, with allegations surfacing that Diddy sought sexual favors from Davis, thus intertwining their lives for over five years. 
While Davis has been open about his sexuality, opting to embrace it openly, Diddy has maintained a level of privacy regarding their relationship. This contrast has fueled speculation and questions regarding the nature of their connection, especially considering Davis's transparency juxtaposed against Diddy's reluctance to address the matter directly. Mark Curry, another individual intricately connected to Diddy's sphere, sheds light on the legal intricacies surrounding the mogul. Having been a former signee under Bad Boy Records, Curry offers invaluable insights into Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy, which culminated in a confidential settlement. Drawing parallels between Diddy's legal entanglements and the high-profile cases of Bill Cosby and R. Kelly, Curry hints at a recurring pattern of allegations against Diddy, raising significant questions about his conduct and the potential consequences thereof. This multifaceted narrative paints a nuanced picture of the complex world surrounding Diddy, replete with legal complexities, personal relationships, and the public's insatiable curiosity regarding the truth behind the headlines. The voices of individuals such as Roger Bonds, Exhibit, Clive Davis, and Mark Curry contribute diverse perspectives that add depth to the ongoing conversation about Diddy's character and conduct. Their accounts offer glimpses into different facets of Diddy's behavior, from allegations of violence to questions surrounding his personal relationships. Ultimately, these stories underscore the importance of examining and understanding the impact of Diddy's actions on those around him. Despite these, the number of fingers pointing at him, Diddy both through his lawyer and in person has continued continued to deny, and had previously issued a statement denying all the allegations against him. Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. Diddy reacts to the allegations. Diddy did not just deny the allegations, but also vowed to get back at his accusers. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Diddy's legal team has been working tirelessly to defend him against these allegations. They argue that there is no evidence to support Cassie's claims and that her accusations are motivated by ulterior motives. One such motive, according to Diddy's lawyer, is financial gain. They dismiss Joneses as an opportunist seeking a payout. The dismissal of Rodney Jones as an opportunist seeking financial gain adds another layer of complexity to the allegations against Diddy. Diddy's legal team argues that Jones' claims lack credibility and are driven by a desire for monetary compensation rather than genuine experiences. They emphasize that these accusations are part of a larger pattern of individuals attempting to exploit Diddy's fame and success for personal gain. Diddy's denial of the allegations and the dismissal of Jones as an opportunist seeking a payout are crucial elements of his defense strategy. By categorically denying the accusations and questioning the motives of those who have come forward, Diddy aims to cast doubt on the credibility of the allegations against him. However, it is important to note that while Diddy and his legal team deny the allegations, multiple witnesses have come forward to corroborate Cassie's account. This adds weight to the allegations and raises questions about the veracity of Diddy's defense. The court of public opinion operates differently from the judicial system, relying on emotions, beliefs, and media narratives. Without compelling evidence, doubt and suspicion persist, leaving the public divided in their perception of Diddy's guilt or innocence. The impact of these allegations on Diddy's career and reputation cannot be ignored. The scandal has already had significant repercussions, with artists like Aubrey O'Day and Kid Cudi expressing support for Cassie. The public's perception of Diddy has been altered, and the allegations have sparked a larger conversation about power dynamics, consent, and accountability within the entertainment industry. Sex crimes are not new to Hollywood. In fact, there are other celebrities who have been charged with sex crimes. Known as one of the greatest boxers of all time, Mike Tyson's career was marred by a highly publicized trial regarding the sexual assault of Desiree Washington. In early 1992, Tyson's life took a dramatic turn when he was accused of sexually assaulting Desiree Washington, an 18-year-old Miss Black America contestant. The trial captivated the nation, as Tyson had just finished a years-long reign as the undisputed heavyweight champion. During the trial, the prosecution presented evidence and testimonies from emergency room physicians and Tyson's own chauffeur, all supporting Washington's allegations. The defense, on the other hand, sought to challenge the credibility of the accuser and present an alternative narrative. After weeks of intense courtroom proceedings, the jury reached a verdict. In a highly publicized decision, Tyson was found guilty of the sexual assault charges. The conviction sent shockwaves through the sports world and marked a significant turning point in Tyson's life and career. As a result of the conviction, Tyson was sentenced to six years in prison. However, he ended up serving less than half of his sentence and was released in March of 1995. Despite the conviction, Tyson wasted no time in returning to the boxing ring. With his August bout against 
against Peter McNeely being billed as He's Back. The trial and conviction of Mike Tyson shed light on the issue of sexual assault and the abuse of power within the sports industry. It sparked conversations about consent, accountability, and the treatment of women in a male-dominated field. Tyson's case serves as a reminder that even those who achieve great success and fame can face the consequences of their alleged actions. It highlights the importance of creating a culture of respect and ensuring that individuals are held accountable for their behavior, regardless of their status or achievements. For a while there, James Franco was one of the biggest names in Hollywood. But that all changed in the late 2010s when it was reported that Franco was exploiting women through his acting school, Studio 4. According to various sources, Franco encouraged his students to perform intimate physical acts for favors and behaved inappropriately during sensual scenes. These allegations sent shockwaves through the industry and tarnished Franco's reputation. The seriousness of the allegations against Franco culminated in a lawsuit that was filed in October 2019. Two female defendants came forward, claiming that Franco held sexually exploitative auditions and film shoots at his studio and even filmed the interactions. The lawsuit detailed instances where Franco allegedly coerced his students into engaging in intimate acts under the guise of artistic expression. The lawsuit shed light on the power dynamics within the entertainment industry and the exploitation that can occur behind closed doors. It exposed the dark side of fame and the abuse of power that some celebrities are accused of wielding. In the face of mounting evidence and public scrutiny, Franco eventually settled the lawsuit for just under $1 million. The settlement was seen by many as an admission of guilt, although Franco himself maintained his innocence throughout the legal proceedings. The settlement amount served as a form of compensation for the victims and a way to avoid a lengthy and potentially damaging trial. The fallout from the allegations and the subsequent lawsuit had a significant impact on Franco's career. He went from being one of the most sought-after actors in Hollywood to a controversial figure overnight. Many projects that he was involved in faced backlash, and he was dropped from several high-profile roles. Franco's case serves as a stark reminder that even those who seem untouchable in the world of entertainment can be held accountable for their actions. It highlights the importance of creating a safe and respectful environment within the industry, where individuals are not subjected to exploitation or abuse. Once known as America's dad and the most beloved man on television, Bill Cosby's warm demeanor and sharp eye for comedy earned him legions of fans. But there was a much darker reality hiding just below the surface. Sexual assault allegations had followed Cosby since the mid-60s, but for many years, nothing substantial came of them. However, in a turning point for the hashtag MeToo movement, Cosby eventually faced his day of reckoning when he was accused by a woman named Andrea Constand. Constand's allegation was the only one that fell within the statutes of limitations, and it was her story that put Cosby on trial. The trial became a media spectacle, with the world watching as the once beloved comedian faced charges of sexual assault. During the trial, Constand shared her harrowing account of the assault, detailing the impact it had on her life. Other women also came forward to testify against Cosby, sharing similar stories of alleged abuse. The trial shed light on the issue of sexual assault and the power dynamics that can enable such behavior. In a stunning verdict, Cosby was found guilty of sexual assault and faced up to 10 years in prison. However, his time behind bars was cut short due to a legal technicality. Cosby's legal team successfully argued that a previous agreement with a prosecutor had granted him immunity from criminal charges. As a result, Cosby was released from prison, sparking outrage and debate about the justice system and the rights of survivors. The legal technicality not only led to Cosby's release, but also raised questions about the fairness and effectiveness of the legal process in cases of sexual assault. The Cosby case serves as a stark reminder that justice can be complex and elusive, even in high-profile trials. It highlights the challenges faced by survivors of sexual assault and the importance of creating a supportive environment where their voices can be heard and believed. As for Diddy, the outcome of the legal battle will ultimately determine the truth behind these allegations. However, the damage to his reputation has already been done. Did this video pique your interest? You can click on the videos showing on your screen to enjoy more.